Launching high power rockets. About a year ago, I was able to get my level 1 high power rocketry certification, which allowed me to fly much higher impulse rocket motors. Hobby rocket motors come in different impulse classes denoted by letters, with A through G sized motors available to pretty much anyone. With my L1 cert, I can now fly up to I class motors, but I didn't get the chance to do so until an event called Rockstock. At this event, hundreds of rocket builders gather to launch their flying creations. It takes place in Lucerne Dry Lake, a flat, desolate place with nothing flammable for miles. Getting ready for the event, I had the usual three rockets, but I wanted to make another one so I could carry a high-resolution action camera on board to see the spectacular views. Following my tradition of names that are hopefully never fulfilled, I decided to name this new rocket Splat in hopes that it would never do so. So I designed all the components so that almost everything would be 3D printed except the body tube, which would cause problems later. I printed out all the parts and ran a few simulations to determine the optimal delay for parachute deployment. Once it was all assembled, I got on the road and headed out to the launch site, following a bumpy dirt road to the event and setting up camp on the far side of the flight line. Here's Splat. The desert dart. The noodler. And the fireball. Here's our tent, chairs, cameras, and a monitor. We're all set up. Ready for the first launch, I prepped the parachute and loaded in the first rocket motor. I started with an Aerotech G77 red line so that the rocket and its camera payload would be under less peak G-loading for the first flight. I headed to the LCO disk and waited a long time to get a pad reserved. Once Splat had a pad and it was clear for loading, I slid it onto the launch rail. This was its first flight. Would it survive or would it go horribly wrong? Even with Splat having a beautiful flight, the 3D printed fins did not survive the landing and were in too many pieces to rebuild on site. I thankfully had three other rockets that were in flyable condition that I would fly later. I took this as an opportunity to explore and meet other rocket builders. There were big rockets, small rockets, fully 3D printed rockets, and experimental rockets of every shape and size. As the sun got lower in the sky, I prepped the fireball to be the last launch before nightfall. I prepared an H-135 white lightning motor that had a very high peak thrust but a short burn duration. Once the rocket was ready, I brought it out to its assigned pad for loading. As I was waiting for the fireball to launch, someone else had a bad day when the rocket became a giant sparkler on the pad. Thankfully, they were able to put it out rather quickly and proceed to launch my rocket. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> <That's good. laughs>
I don't know if he'll ever find that. Thankfully, most of the rock it was easy to find, but a damaged shock cord meant that the aft section had fallen some distance away. Shock cord ripped. Still have to find the fin section. I'm out here, middle of the desert, pretty much nothing all around, looking for the fin section of my rocket, the fireball. So, I covered this tube right here. That's pretty much it. No idea where the other part is. But hopefully it's in lost or found, or I can find it tomorrow. About an hour later, my dad has finally found the fins. Let's take a look. <laughs> we took a picture of it earlier, so switch to the picture of me finding it on the ground. Much like Splat, the fireball had also taken some considerable damages to its fins. This damage came from using an old shot cord and possibly trimming off a little too much delay grain, meaning the parachute came out early. With an early deployment, the two parts separated and the one without a parachute hit the ground much harder. Even with this early deployment in this flight, the fireball got just 12 feet shy of 3,000 feet, meaning this is definitely my highest recorded altitude record. By this time, the sun had already set and the night flights would begin shortly. I'd be flying the desert dart on an Aerotech G78 Mojave Green motor, so I covered the rock with a couple blinky lights and cooked some dinner as I waited for the night flights to begin. The night flights got off to a spectacular start with a huge sparky rock lighting up the entire lake bed for a couple seconds. I loaded up the desert dart and got ready for launch. After the desert dart flew, there are still many spectacular night flights to see. Once they had finished launching for the evening, my dad and I explored the other campsites and huddled around our little gas heater before eventually going to bed. It got down to almost freezing, so thankfully with lots of blankets. It is so cold this morning. Beautiful day, though. After a nice pancake breakfast and a particularly loud wake-up launch... <laughs> it's time to start prepping for my biggest launch of the event. This time, I was using a reusable motor case. This allowed me to fill it up with even more money too. This allowed me to load it with larger amounts of propellant and not throw away the case every time. This case was rated for being filled with an H180 motor's worth of propellant and would produce over 42 pounds of peak thrust. That's a lot of thrust considering that the noodler only weighs about a pound and a half. It was loaded onto the pad and all I could do was hope that I had put the motor together correctly. Record. If you can find it, there it is. Way up there, holy smokes. It's got to shoot. It's got to shoot. Woohoo! 14 seconds was perfect for it. <laughs> it totally stuck the landing. Isn't that amazing? Wow. It's so great. I'm so precarious, though. like really in there. Mm -hmm. Wow. A good inch and a half. Yeah. After the noodler's flight, I watched a number of other launches. Mm. <laughs> 
Eventually, people started leaving, so I just stood off and got on the road back home. I took apart the reusable motor case to find that it had done quite well and was able to be used again. Launching high-power rockets at Rockstock was a very fun experience, and I hope to be back with even better rocket designs. If you're around Southern California and like rockets, I'd recommend making a day trip to come out to one of their monthly launches, which happens on the second Saturday of every month. I will be repairing the damage and making improvements to rockets before they fly again. Come on.